What's up, everybody? My name is Reggie, and today we are going to be talking about Gateway Games. Now, if you're already an enthusiast, don't leave just yet. I want you to comment below and tell me some of your Gateway Games, and maybe leave a suggestion for those newbies who are checking out this video. So to please the algorithm, I have come up with my top 10 Gateway Games, five of my personal gateways from back in the day that I still recommend, and five newer games that I think fill a similar niche. I'm going to show you the typical price in US dollars on screen and the BGG weight for each of those. Here we go. The first gateway game I'm going to talk about is a remarkable little two player only game called Jai Per. This is a market style game where you are drafting cards to outsell and out trade your opponent while keeping an eye on your camel herds. What I personally love about the game is that there's a healthy balance of luck and tactics and they help mitigate that by making it a best of three game. So if you get really unlucky in round one and you don't get that spice card or gold card that you really needed, then you have another chance at beating your opponent in the match. Uh, another thing that's really crucial for modern board games now is the importance of timing. And this game really teaches you to hold on to things and wait and sell at the just the right time. Um, and I think that is something that's really uh, prevalent in a lot of board games nowadays. I also appreciate how small of a box it is. I've traveled with this many times. I've played this in an airport and I think it's great for non-gamers. If you have a non-gamer spouse, for instance, um, that might be a really good game to check out. My modern recommendation that fills this same niche of small box drafting game is Point Salad. It came out in 2019, 10 years after Jaipur, and I think it really does a great job of welcoming people into the idea of open drafting and set collection. These are the two mechanics in the whole game. You are either grabbing two veggie cards or one scoring card, and you keep collecting as much as you can to score the highest points. It goes up to six players and is really, truly approachable. Why I think it's a good fit for nowadays modern gaming is that it really teaches you how to enjoy open drafting and how fun it can be, but also how cutthroat it can be. I have had so much success introducing this to my friends and my friends' partners, and I think Point Salad is a game that will be a staple in many households for a long time to come. I personally have the... EV edition uh, that's only in Korean here with uh, like Vaporeon and Flareon and all those. But I think the vegetable point salad version is a lot more um, welcoming to the average person. So that is point salad. My second personal gateway game is Ticket to Ride. And this might be the quintessential big box game that you can find everywhere from Amazon to Target to Barnes and Noble. The OG version is from 2004 and might be the heaviest on this list, but it is a little deceptive because each turn is very simple. You're either grabbing cards from the display or you are playing trains down onto your personal route. The primary way to score points though are with these private objectives that you have in your hand to connect to different locations. And so other people get in your way and you sometimes have to prioritize which one you can get and which one you cannot um, fulfill. And this mechanic is called contracts on BGG. And I think it's very important for new gamers to get under their belt because many modern games have this mechanic. So some of my personal favorites that have private contracts are Wingspan and Sagrada that also have public objectives. Um, and I think that's really exciting to get that in such an approachable game like Ticket to Ride. I knew this was a fabulous intro game when my own parents got a copy of this game and play it regularly. And I would encourage you to check it out or one of the many, many, many versions that have come out since then, like Nordic Countries or San Francisco. Um, Berlin is coming out soon. And I have right here, um, New York, which is the copy that I enjoy and I show to other folks many times or let them borrow because it's about a 15 minute version, which is really exciting. So that is Ticket to Ride. My recommendation for this slot in your collection is the newest game on this list, and that is Starry Night Sky. This game is now available in 2023, and I received 
a review copy from Buffalo Games. And since then, I've played it seven or eight times at all three player counts, two, three, and four. I was intrigued by this game because it is designed by Emma Larkins, who did Abandon All Artichokes. There's a bonus um, small intro deck building game for you there that you can find pretty much everywhere as well. Why I think it fits into this pocket is because there is a big, central, beautiful board that all players are collectively adding to to accomplish their own personal goals. And at the same time, the turn structure is pretty straightforward. So in Starry Night Sky, you are moving this adorable little telescope around the map to accomplish um, small goals and also completely map out certain constellations in order to get the biggest amount of points at the end of the game. Why I think this is so approachable is one, it's beautiful. The components are great. I love the little stars. I love the personal board. I love the box itself. I mean, check this out. It's it's so shiny. My wife and the people we were showing it to were very impressed with that. And so am I. I mean, it is very approachable. If this is out on the table, people are gonna wanna come play it, even if they're non-gamers. Number two, Starry Night Sky is not stingy with points. You are getting points every time you discover a new constellation, for every star that you put on that constellation and every time you accomplish one of the little exploration goals, which you get a new one every single turn. So why I think this is important is that newer gamers, when you are playing a lot of modern games, you do not score until the end of the game. So this game is giving you a lot of rapid hits of dopamine. And I think that is great for um, satisfying someone who doesn't have the attention span or patience of getting used to playing board games and sitting down for 45, 60 minutes um, and then scoring at the end to find out that they lose. So I think this gives you that nice satisfaction throughout the game. And I think that's going to be very, very good for being a gateway board game into this hobby. My third gateway game is Sushi Go. It is the original pick and pass game where you look at a hand of cards, Choose one and pass the rest. This is from 2013 and it comes in a nice little um, tin here. I actually prefer now the bigger version called Sushi Go Party that is a little more expensive, but this one is so affordable, so lightweight, you just gotta have it in your collection. Um, I loved it. Uh, after playing it for a while, which is interesting. I did not immediately adore this game. And now after playing it on BGA and playing Sushi Go Party, I've really come to appreciate the strategy that is in it, even though all you're doing is picking a card and passing it along. But when you look at the person to your left and you realize they have a wasabi waiting, you're like, I cannot give them this squid or else they're gonna score a ton of points. And so I think that's a really good thing to get in the habit of when it comes to drafting. So this game is also known as the game that took the seven wonders mechanic and distilled it down into a nice 20 minute package. So I'm gonna segue that by saying my modern day version of this is actually seven wonders architects. Beautiful game with great production that really drew me in when I saw it on the table. It might be the most expensive um, retail one on this list, but I think this is a game that really can't be beat in welcoming new gamers at a high player count of seven, also teaching them some nice mechanics of open drafting. Instead of having seven cards in your hand, you are picking between two face-up decks on your left and right, or picking from the top of a face down deck over there. The one way you get to peek at what's on there is through this awesome cat pawn token, like Egyptian style. And it is really cool. I think if there's anything that can get people into board a board game, it is this amazing little cat pawn in Seven Wonders Architects. The theme is centered around the ancient world and all these amazing wonders like the pyramids and the Colossus of Rhodes. And what I really like to highlight in this game is that there are variable player powers. Each of these ancient wonders that you are building has a unique power to either help you grab more cards or grab cards from different parts of the table. And so that kind of opens up the drafting to be a little more exciting and offers a lot of replayability. 
I think this game is the best in mixed company, meaning people who are gamers and love board games and play every day and people who haven't played a game for a long time. I think this fits that perfect spot if you're ever in a group where you have maybe siblings or coworkers that don't play very often, but you want to introduce them to games and enjoy yourself. I think Seven Wonders Architects is the prime example of that game. My fourth personal gateway game is Codenames. I think this is the party game that many of you have played since 2015. And it is a very straightforward word game where you are either giving a clue to get your teammate to get the right code word and not get the wrong code word, or you're guessing that as the team. And why I think it's so great as a gateway game and why I still recommend it to this day is that someone like me, who really loves to come up with the really perfect word clue can be the clue giver often. And you can have people join the game who are more passive gamers who just wanna help out and guess and throw out ideas. And it's great for family gatherings and coworker gatherings. And so I think that is why Codenames has stood the test of time and is again, accessible everywhere. The game that I'm gonna recommend as a more modern version that came out in 2018 is Just One. The mechanics are a little different, but it is a word game. And I have talked about this many times. I am a big, big fan of Just One, and so are many other people. It's won a lot of awards. It is a seven player party game where one person does not know the answer and everyone else has to come up with a clue. The one caveat though, is that if you match your clue with any of the other players, then you both have to erase it. So where I would have normally had six clues to work with, I might only have four if two people matched. And so I really like that you have to be creative and think of a clue that is obvious, but not too obvious. And who's gonna write down milk for the for the answer of cow? And so it's really, really replayable. I talk about this game a lot because I believe that anyone that speaks the language, English or whatever, can play this game. It is that simple. And so I think it is the essential party word game for any collection nowadays. That is just one. We are on to my final two recommendations and my personal gateway is King Domino. This is the Spiel des Jahres winner of 2017 and it came out in 2016 um, across the world. My personal story with this game is that I was on my first vacation with my then girlfriend, now wife, and we went to a board game cafe and said, we really haven't played many games since Clue and Monopoly. And the awesome board game cafe employee um, in Victoria, BC, put this game down and said, yeah, this one won a lot of awards, you can do it. And it genuinely blew my mind because I was like, wait, how is this a board game with no board? What you're doing is drafting tiles from the center of four options and building them on your own kingdom domino style, all the different colors, you must match at least one other color, kind of how like dominoes matches with the pips. And so this is genuinely my comfort game. I still play it fairly regularly and love it so much. Um, it is tile placement is the mechanism that this is called. And it again, teaches that cutthroat drafting mechanic, but also gives you that puzzle building um, if you have a spatially aware um, new non-gamer or you like puzzles yourself um, or dominoes, this might be the right game for you. Now, my modern recommendation that fits tile placement is another widely regarded game, and that is Cascadia. Now, I am wearing the Mount Rainier shirt here. I am proudly from the Pacific Northwest, and Randy Flynn, the designer, is also. Um, but this is a game based on the Pacific Northwest fauna Yes, fauna. Oh my gosh, do I know do I know nature words? Yes, the animal cell, red-tailed hawk and chinook salmon and grizzly bear and all these things and you are drafting an animal tile and a landscape tile each turn of four and placing them in your board. The thing that I really like about Cascadia for new gamers is there are no placement restrictions. You can place that hex anywhere you want. It behooves you to place them near similar landscapes or terrain types. Um, for more points, but if you're a new game, your first time playing, you can just put it anywhere. You're not restricted and getting frustrated in that way. And so the actual turn by turn plays are very straightforward. The scoring is where the complexity comes in. And there's so much replayability with those because there are lots of different scoring types for each animal. So 
I love Cascadia. It's been praised many, many times, but I just think for a game that you can relax, play some nice music, have a cup of coffee, um, this is a lovely game. Might be uh, the heaviest for real on my list, because again, like Ticket to Ride, there are other versions, but Cascade on its own can actually get a little thinky if you're really trying to optimize it. But for your first play, it's just so inviting and exciting to um, dive deeper into the mechanics and the strategy of Cascadia. So that is my final um, recommendation, Cascadia by Randy Flynn. I hope you got something out of this video. If there is someone in your life that you're just trying to coax like a, like a squirrel in your backyard to get into this hobby, share this video with them. And if you got anything out of this, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps with getting this spread around. And I just want to share the hobby and talk about these amazing games, um, especially the lighter weight games that are going to welcome new folks into the hobby. Thanks so much and see you in the next video. Metal Tins.